So this uh, flow seminar, the idea here is that uh, the global community working on all aspects of federated learning is welcome to uh, join the seminar, listen to the latest uh, research. Uh, we'll be selecting some of the um, uh, most interesting contributions across the full breadth of federated learning that includes algorithms, models, privacy, personalization, application systems, hardware, anything you can think of, anything that is relevant to federated learning, we'd like to include. Uh, so the uh, mechanics of these talks is that uh, a person gives a talk, there are slides, we see that person, uh, the video of that person, and you are welcome to ask questions at any point during the talk. So this is welcome for the seminar. In fact, 20 minutes are allocated to questions and 40 minutes roughly to the talk itself, but this, these questions don't have to come at the end. And, and Blake confirmed earlier that he's happy to uh, receive questions at, at any point in time. Now, Samuel will say something about, maybe Samuel, you can show yourself, can say something about the mechanics of how you can ask questions. There's two ways. Samuel, can you yeah, elaborate yeah. on so, this? So, yeah, so, so first one, so in the bottom menu, you have a chat. So there, like make sure that your question is posed to everyone so everyone can see your question. And if we see that there's some questions, we're gonna just read it or we're gonna unmute you and you can ask your question yourself. Or there's another option. Also in the bottom menu, you can see the participants. So if you just open it, then also in the bottom menu of that pop-up, you're gonna see raise hand. And if we see that somebody raises hand, we also, we just unmute you and you can ask a question. So, so these are two options how you can ask the question. Right, thank you, Sam. So Samuel and me will be monitoring uh, these uh, hand raises and, and the chat. And uh, once we see this, we'll, we'll uh, either give you space or, or uh, read these questions on your behalf. So uh, it's great pleasure to, to welcome the second uh, speaker of, of Flo, uh, Blake Woodwork, who is a PhD student at TTIC supervised by Nati Srebro, who's also here today. Uh, so Blake, he's got his PhD, uh, sorry, PhD, you'll probably get your PhD, but BS, <laughs> BS, BS, BS from Yale, but, uh, we, and he worked with uh, Dan Spielmann. This was probably something like five years ago, something like this. And he focuses in his research on machine learning and optimization. And today he'll give a talk, which is uh, loosely, and how loosely he'll, he'll explain related to the previous talk. And uh, this is, uh, is local SGD better than mini batch SGD? So Blake, go ahead. Great, thanks for the introduction um, and thanks for everyone uh, for being here today. Um, so I expect I don't need to work very hard to convince you guys that distributed optimization is an important subject, uh, but I'm gonna make sure I do it anyway. Um, so an important driver of the interest in machine learning or in distributed optimization recently is machine learning, uh, which often involves these massive models and huge data sets. Um, and so with, with billions of parameters and millions of examples, uh, sequential training on a single machine can really just be uh, infeasible. Um, and it's therefore important to leverage parallelism in order to speed up training. Um, and for this reason, there's been a lot of interest in designing new and better optimization algorithms for uh, distributed training. Um, however, distributed optimization is a pretty big umbrella. There's a lot of different uh, settings and there are many different considerations, constraints, and goals, which can be mixed and matched uh, sort of in a lot of different ways and can lead to many unique situations, which can sort of significantly affect the sorts of algorithms we would want to use. Um, today, I'm going to focus on just one specific parallel uh, environment, which I'm going to call the intermittent communication model. Um, this is pretty simple, but I would argue that it's one of the prototypical distributed optimization settings, and it captures many of the important considerations and trade-offs. So in this setting, there's going to be M parallel workers, which are going to collaborate over the course of R rounds of communication. Within each round, each machine may compute K stochastic gradients. So this means that all in all, each machine is going to compute K times R stochastic gradients, 
And I'm going to denote this by t, which roughly corresponds to the runtime of the algorithm. Um, I'm also going to focus today on the case of homogeneous or IID data, which is drawn from the same distribution for all of the machines. So just to convince you that this is sort of a reasonable and interesting model of parallelism, I'll point out that the fairly famous uh, training ImageNet in one hour paper, this corresponds to exactly this intermittent communication model uh, with homogeneous data. So despite the relative simplicity of this setting, uh, actually the, price, the precise complexity of optimization here is not yet known. And we also don't have optimal algorithms for this setting. And of perhaps the highest practical importance is that we don't really understand how the trade-offs work in this setting. So for example, if we fix the total number of stochastic gradients used, how does the optimal error depend on R versus M versus K versus T? Um, does, for example, doubling the number of machines allow us to half the amount of communication? Or does optimizing X percent longer allow us to get away with using Y percent fewer uh, samples? Answering questions like these helps us both understand optimization in this uh, particular setting, but it also uh, gives insight into other uh, potentially more complicated distributed optimization settings too. So in order to discuss convergence rates, we need to make some assumptions about the objective function. Um, today I'm going to focus on the case of convex objectives uh, defined as an expectation. And I'm going to assume that the, the overall function capital F is H smooth and that the stochastic gradients have variance bounded by sigma squared uh, uniformly. Um, all of the results I'm going to show you today, they apply very similarly if we assume that F is strongly convex, but uh, to keep things sort of focused, I'm just going to focus on, on regular convexity. And again, to some of you, the setting we're considering, uh, intermittent communication, IID data, convex objectives, this might seem kind of simple. However, even in this simple setting, uh, there are a number of gaps in our understanding, and closing these gaps uh, is useful not only for understanding what's happening here, but also, again, uh, it might be of value more broadly. So in the intermittent communication setting, the simplest and I would say most obvious optimization algorithm is mini-batch stochastic gradient descent. Um, during each round of communication, each machine is going to compute a mini batch of size k. Then when the machines are allowed to communicate at the end of the round, we're going to aggregate these individual mini batches into one large mini batch of size k times m. And we're going to use this one mini batch to take a single stochastic gradient step. So in other words, I'm referring to r steps of mini batch stochastic gradient descent with mini batches of size km. And I, I want to emphasize that this is sort of the natural version of mini-batch stochastic gradient descent for the intermittent communication setting. Um, mini-batch stochastic gradient descent itself kind of can refer to many different algorithms, but I'm, I'm referring to this particular one, which can be implemented in the intermittent communication uh, model of com computation and communication. And throughout this talk, when I say mini-batch stochastic gradient descent, this is exactly what I mean r steps of SGD with mini batches of size k times m. Now, mini batch SGD is an overwhelmingly popular algorithm, both in the distributed case and also in the sequential case. Um, and this is for convex and also for non-convex objectives. Um, for this reason, I think it's a really excellent point of reference uh, with, that we can use to understand the intermittent communication setting. Um, also, in the convex case, we have really a nearly complete understanding of how this algorithm behaves, both theoretically and uh, practically. So in particular, for almost 40 years, we've uh, very tightly understood the worst case error of this algorithm, which I've shown you here. But how good is this? Like, what should we make of this bound here? Um, maybe it's optimal. 
Well, it's definitely not optimal. Um, for starters, we know that we can accelerate this algorithm using the method of Kadimian Lan. Um, and indeed, this gives a slightly improved bound, but again, it's not really clear what we should make of this new one. Is this as good as we can do? Well, again, I can tell you it's definitely not as good as we can do. Um, so consider the, the following algorithm, which I'm going to call a single machine SGD. Uh, for single machine SGD, we simply do k times r steps of SGD with mini batches of size 1. And we do this on just one of our available machines, and we just completely ignore the remaining m minus 1 machines. We don't use them at all. And then this probably sounds kind of dumb because we're not actually sort of using all of the available resources. Um, however, it isn't actually that crazy of a thing to do. In particular, this method takes k times more steps than mini batch SGD. So if taking more steps turns out to be more important than reducing the variance with mini batching, then single machine SGD could actually end up being better. Um, and, and like many batch SGD, we understand very well sort of the worst case behavior of, of single machine SGD. And we can also accelerate it using the method of Kadimian Lan. So examining these new rates, we see that the, uh, the single machine SGD can sometimes be better than mini batch SGD and vice versa. Um, and, and we see that roughly speaking, single machine SGD is better when the noise in the stochastic gradient sigma is sufficiently small. And consequently, we can say that uh, accelerated mini batch SGD is definitely not an optimal algorithm for intermittent communication in every case because, well, sometimes you're better off doing single machine SGD and vice versa. Single machine SGD is also not optimal because sometimes you're better off doing mini batch SGD. So again, this raises the question of whether we can improve upon both of these methods. And I'd actually like to point out here that whether or not we accelerate one or both of these algorithms, it might affect sort of the crossover point, but it doesn't actually change the fact that neither approach is always better than the other. So for this reason, I'm actually gonna focus today on an even easier question, which is whether we can do better than both of these algorithms without acceleration. So I just showed you that accelerating either is not enough to dominate both. And so a, a genuinely new approach is gonna be needed here to improve upon both of these. But what other algorithm could we use? Well, one clear contender is local SGD, which has received quite a bit of attention in recent years. Um, and as Ahmed uh, described it last week, the idea of local SGD is to allow each machine to make multiple SGD steps during each round of communication. So specifically, the machines are going to start each round of communication at a common starting point. Each, in, each machine will independently perform K steps of SGD locally. And then at the end of the round, when they're allowed to communicate again, the machines will average together their local iterates, and this will serve as the starting point for the next round of communication. So empirically, local SGD has been used in a huge variety of settings and, and to great success. Uh, this is both for convex problems and also for non-convex ones. Um, and it often, in these uh, practical settings, it, it outperforms alternatives such as mini batch SGD. So empirically, local SGD seems like a very strong algorithm. Also, on a more sort of conceptual level, uh, local SGD seems quite appealing as an alternative both to mini batch SGD and single machine SGD. Um, for starters, it seems like it should be better than mini batch SGD since it's uh, making sort of many more updates. And it's constantly making progress towards the minimizer, even when the machines aren't communicating with each other. It also sort of clearly seems better than single machine SGD, since it actually makes use of the available parallelism. So does local SGD really get the best of both worlds? Does it actually improve over mini batch and single machine SGD? Uh, 
So in previous work, this has sort of been the implicit presumption, I think, uh, that the people have sort of seemed to presume that local SUD is indeed superior to the alternatives. However, it's proven to be surprisingly difficult to actually achieve a satisfying theoretical analysis of local SGD. So what can we say about local SGD? How does it compare to many batch SGD? There have been a number of papers in the past few years which analyzed local SGD in a variety of settings, and some of them I'll show you here. Um, and as of the beginning of this year, these were sort of the best analyses for the convex homogeneous data setting that we're, we're focusing on today. Um, however, there are many other papers, um, some with slightly worse guarantees than this, or others that have analyzed local SGD in other settings, for example, for non-convex objectives or for uh, heterogeneous data. Um, I'm not going to talk about those today, but some of them are, are shown below. So here's what these papers showed. And just staring at these bounds, it probably isn't super clear what's going on here. Um, and it's probably not obvious what this says about how local SGD compares against uh, mini batch SGD. Um, but in fact, it actually turns out that these bounds don't tell us very much about that comparison. So starting with the first two, it turns out that these two bounds are actually strictly worse than mini batch SGD, and they don't show any improvement over mini batch SGD in any regime. Uh, moving on to the bound from Khaled et al., uh, this guarantee is, is also generally worse than mini batch SGD. Um, there, there is actually a regime in which the bound does show improvement, but this only happens when the variance in the stochastic gradients is very small. Um, and in fact, it turns out that this local SGD guarantee is sort of only better than mini batch SGD when single machine is also better than mini batch SGD. Um, and I would say that this is a sort of trivial regime because in this case, all of these methods are essentially just gradient descent. And when you're doing gradient descent, doing more steps is kind of unambiguously better. And so, uh, clearly, single machine and local SGD, which, which take k times r steps, is going to be better than mini batch SGD, which only takes r steps. Uh, and so it's sort of in this scenario, there's really no need for parallelism at all. And finally, uh, Karimoretti et al. analyzed scaffold. Uh, this is an algorithm that's not local SGD, but it kind of closely resembles it, and it also belongs in this same intermittent communication model. Um, they're able to show that scaffold matches mini batch SGD, uh, but they don't actually show any improvement beyond mini batch SGD. So, over a number of years, there have been numerous attempts to analyze local SGD, but at the end of the day, we don't actually know if local SGD really improves over mini batch SGD from any of these analyses. So, Backing up for just a moment, so far I've been looking at this through the lens of comparing bounds on the worst case error. In other words, I've been asking how small can you drive the error for a particular value of m, k, or r using each of these algorithms. I briefly want to connect this to a different perspective that is sometimes taken when looking at local SGD. So another way of looking at this is asking how much we can reduce communication without paying for it. Um, so in this view, we sort of have as a point of reference an algorithm I'm gonna, I'm gonna call continuous communication SGD. And continuous communication SGD is just gonna be K times R steps of SGD with mini batch size M. In other words, the machines are sort of allowed to communicate constantly. Once per stochastic gradient they compute, and this sort of captures what happens when you're completely unconstrained in terms of communication. But perhaps this is an unnecessarily large amount of communication. And maybe we could get away with, for example, communicating k times less frequently. So we actually know that continuous communication SGD is essentially the best you can do uh, without accelerating. So if we could do just as well as this, but without using as much communication, 
That's really a clear win. So how might we do this? Well, one obvious way to reduce the communication is to use local SGD or mini batch SGD or actually any other intermittent communication method. Uh, specifically, any com intermittent communication method is going to reduce the amount of communication by a factor of k. So one might ask, to what extent can we increase k without paying for it? So in other words, another way of evaluating the effectiveness of local SGD or mini batch SGD or any of these other intermittent communication methods is to ask how large can we make k while still competing with continuous communication SGD. In other words, how much can we reduce the communication without paying for it? So starting from the guarantees we have, we can calculate k star, the, the largest possible k, by solving a simple inequality. That is, we just solve for the largest k such that local SGD's guarantee is less than continuous communication SGD's. So it's, it's pretty straightforward to figure out k star for each of the local SGD analyses. This is the one for Stitch 2018. Uh, we can do this for the other ones. And we see that in fact, local SGD is able to compete with continuous communication SGD as long as k is small enough and possibly with uh, some additional restrictions. And this is good news. Um, it's often pointed to also as evidence that local SGD is doing very well. After all, we've shown that local SGD can significantly reduce the communication without losing any performance at all. However, we're missing something here. And what we're missing is that there's actually a much better way of reducing the communication, which is, as you might have guessed, mini batch SGD. So if we just do the same calculation for mini batch SGD, we see that we can actually reduce communication by a significantly larger factor than these analyses for local SGD indicate. And of course, this really shouldn't be too surprising. After all, I, I just showed you that none of these local SGD bounds uh, improve over mini batch SGD in terms of the error. And this case star is really not any different fundamentally from the error. So at the end of the day, understanding this viewpoint of reducing communication really isn't any different than understanding the intermittent communication model. If we understand what you can do in the intermittent communication model, then we perfectly well understand how much you can reduce communication. Um, in addition, sort of whichever way you look at it, mini batch SGD really seems like the correct baseline to compare to. Um, and in, in both cases, uh, mini batch SGD has proven to be a pretty difficult baseline to beat. So, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to return to asking for the best achievable error in the intermittent communication model. Uh, but before I move on, are there any questions about? these two different views. I'm monitoring the questions and I do not see anything. Okay. I don't see raised hands. Let's wait a few more seconds. I'm pretty sure something will come in. Okay, uh, Samuel would be able to unmute. So there's a question here, a couple of questions. I'm unmuting uh, Please, Patak. There is another yeah, hi. Um, so a quick question actually, so, um, so I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with like the consensus reformulation of these problems, right? In some sense, we can think of this as solving, you know, like a, a solving constrained problem with um, 
you know, a, a single variable for each machine and a constraint that each of these variables are the same. And then, you know, it's, it's clear that, you know, for example, uh, communication, cons you know, this uh, single machine SGD is really just a projected um, uh, stochastic gradient method for this consensus problem. And so it's not surprising that you can sort of get convergence guarantees. But my question is sort of, what is actually driving convergence in the local SGD model where we have multiple gradient updates prior to computing the centralized averages? Like it's not obvious to me that even if we had you know, actual gradients, if we had access to deterministic gradients, then doing multiple updates on each of these local functions and then to computing an average uh, should entail convergence. So, okay, so I think there are two things to keep in mind here. So the first one is that uh, in, in this setting with homogeneous data or IAD data, sort of all of the machines are, uh, they're in some sense optimizing the same function and they're getting the same information on average. And so uh, you sort of expect that all of the machines are, are working together rather than sort of fighting each other, like what might happen in the heterogeneous case. Um, and in, in addition, because the objective is convex, sort of averaging things is never really going to hurt you. Um, and so all of the machines are sort of like SGD, we know SGD works. And so during the local steps, all of the machines should be making progress and then averaging is never going to hurt you. And hopefully it's going to help you because, uh, you know, on, on average, the, the machines might be doing uh, worse than their averages. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. That helps. Thanks. So sure. there is a question by Ruo Shin. I unmuted you. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, yes, uh, I want to ask uh, uh, here, case done, uh, it's smaller or and uh, is better for these things? Oh, um, no, so K, K star is the, uh, it's basically the factor by which we can reduce communication. So bigger K is better in terms of reducing communication. Um, so as we can see, like this, this number is just bigger than the others. That's why they're in, in red at the moment. Oh, okay. Thank you. No problem. So Andre, uh, go ahead and ask your question. I, uh, so uh, why do we actually need to take average instead of the minimal? I mean, what is the difference? Because, you know, in, in the convex situation, it seems like minimum could be appropriate. Yeah, so taking the minimum would also be good. It might be a little better. Um, one possible concern is that to take the minimum, you would need to actually compute the function value on, on all of your data or something, or at least you need to get a good enough estimate to uh, be able to evaluate what the minimum is. So if you have like a, a huge training set, for example, oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah, actually so. computing the minimum might be sort of hard. But, but yeah, it's, it's a good idea um, if you can do it. Thanks. Thanks. Venkat? Actually, I was answering to Android, basically. So I was trying to answer his question. That's why I wrote. OK. All right, I do not see any further questions. So I'll, I'll move on and we can ask more later if we need to. Sure. Um, Okay, so to summarize so far, uh, mini-batch SGD is sort of a simple and natural baseline that we might hope to improve over in the intermittent communication setting. And both sort of conceptually and also empirically, local SGD seems like a really promising contender for an algorithm that could beat it. Um, however, no existing analysis of local SGD has shown that it's better in sort of any non-trivial setting. 
And, and this doesn't even deal with the fact that the comparison gets even worse if we consider accelerated mini batch SGD. And I want to emphasize here that I don't mean to rag on anyone's uh, analysis. It, it has turned out to be quite difficult to analyze local SGD. And this really raises the question of whether this is an issue with our collective ability to analyze it or whether something else is going on here. Um, a lot of people have spent a lot of time trying to analyze local SGD as well as possible. And so far, sort of nobody has succeeded in showing any improvement over mini batch SGD in any non trivial regime. So, is local SGD actually better than mini batch SGD? And maybe we just haven't figured out a way to prove it? Or maybe we haven't been able to prove it because local SGD actually isn't better than mini batch SGD. So, what's going on here? Um, this is sort of the main question I'm going to try to answer for the rest of the talk. So in an effort to understand how local SGD stacks up against mini batch SGD, we first focus on a special case where the objective is quadratic. Uh, so we analyze local SGD for quadratic objectives, which uh, include, for example, least squares problems. And we show that in this case, local SGD does indeed perform very well. Um, and in fact, it is strictly superior to mini batch SGD in every regime. And furthermore, it's actually sort of, in some sense, optimal up to acceleration. So actually, if you look at this uh, local SGD guarantee for quadratic objectives, you'll see that it only depends on k times r and not on k or r individually at all. Um, so in other words, communicating a single time at the end is just as good as communicating all the time after every stochastic gradient computation. So in some sense, SGD essentially perfectly parallelizes when you're optimizing quadratic objectives. Um, and the intuition behind this result is that the, you can sort of view the local updates as implicit mini batch stochastic gradient steps for the average of the local iterates. So the linearity of the gradient of quadratic functions implies that the average of the local update directions, this thing, is actually an unbiased estimate of the gradient at the average point. Um, and the, the variance of this uh, estimate is reduced by a factor of m. And this happens even though the gradients are computed at the local iterates and not at the average iterate. Um, so in fact, this observation actually can generalize uh, beyond local SGD to other variants where the uh, SGD updates are replaced with others uh, that have a particular form in particular, they have to be uh, linear functions of the previous iterates and the stochastic gradient. Um, but as a corollary to this, we can actually show that local accelerated SGD is minimax optimal for quadratic objectives. And this happens for any value of K. So regardless of how frequently you communicate. Um, and the reason this works is because uh, the accelerated SGD updates are uh, indeed linear in the uh, iterates and the stochastic gradients. So at least in the special case of quadratics, we can prove that local SGD is indeed strictly better than mini batch SGD and also uh, single machine SGD. So that was for quadratic objectives. Uh, what happens for general convex objectives? So more generally, uh, we were able to prove the following upper bound on the error. Um, and our, our proof actually had an additional log factor, which the concurrent work of Kaliskova et al. Uh, was able to avoid. Um, and this is the. I want to emphasize that this is the first analysis to show any improvement over mini batch SGD in any non trivial regime. 
And it also strictly improves upon all of the previous analysis of local SGD. So focusing on the second term of the upper bound, we see that our local SGD guarantee is strictly better than mini batch SGDs when K is sufficiently large, uh, roughly speaking, when K is greater than R. And given existing lower bounds on the error of mini batch SGD, uh, this allows us to conclude for sure that local SGD does in fact perform better in the worst case when K is sufficiently large, when K is greater than R. Um, however, for smaller K, our upper bound does not show improvement. So we haven't shown that local SGD always beats mini batch SGD. We've only shown that it sometimes beats mini batch SGD. And this brings us right back to the same question we had before. Is it just that we haven't been able to prove that local SGD is better than mini batch SGD? Like, why, why can't we do this? It, after all, local SGD really does seem like it should be better. And both sort of conceptually and also in, in many experiments, it has seemed to outperform mini batch. So what, what's going on here? Or maybe local SGD actually is worse than mini batch SGD when K is smaller. So to answer this question, we proved a lower bound on the worst case error of local SGD. And this lower bound actually shows that indeed, local SGD really isn't always better than mini batch SGD. Um, the key term in this lower bound is the first one, which shows that local SGD uh, scales no better than one over K to the two thirds, R to the two thirds. And when we compare this to mini batch SGD, we see that surprisingly, when K is sufficiently small, roughly K less than square root of R, this proves that local SGD really actually can be much worse than mini batch SGD. In fact, this can happen for really small K, even for K as small as two. So in other words, taking just two local steps between communications can actually result in dramatically worse performance relative to mini batch SGD. And taking this sort of one step farther, our lower bound actually shows that in some sense, the second through kth local steps, they're not just unhelpful, they can actually actively hurt you in the worst case. So to illustrate this, consider the following pretty dumb algorithm, which I'll call thumb twiddling SGD. Uh, thumb twiddling SGD is an algorithm where uh, each machine takes a single uh, SGD step at the beginning of the round of communication, and then it's just going to sit and twiddle its thumbs until it's time to communicate. So this is obviously strictly worse than mini batch SGD. Um, and it's sort, in some sense equivalent to local SGD, where you just don't do the second through kth uh, local steps. Um, and sort of it, 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 seems, uh, it seems very dumb, but actually our lower bound shows that uh, in a certain regime, thumb twiddling SGD is actually better than local SGD uh, when, when K is sufficiently small. So in certain regimes, you're actually sort of better off foregoing the second through Kth gradient in each round rather than trying to use local SGD. So, our lower bound shows fairly strongly that local SGD's performance relative to mini batch SGD can degrade quite significantly and be much worse when K becomes small. So uh, before I move on, are there any questions about our upper bound or this lower bound? Let's wait for a few moments. <laughs> 
don't see any questions. Okay. I will move on. So, right. So we proved this lower bound for one specific function. Um, and perhaps this might not convince you that local SGD would actually do poorly on a realistic or natural problem. Uh, so to convince you that this lower bound is really representative of what would happen more generally, uh, we conducted some experiments on a simple logistic regression problem. Um, so here for several values of k and m, we plotted the error of local SGD, thumb twiddling SGD, and mini batch SGD uh, for optimally tuned step sizes. So there's a question now. Oh, okay. I can go on. Please go ahead and ask this. I unmuted you. At least I hope I did. <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. Didn't work out. I clicked on this a few times. Now, now you're unmuted. And now you're not. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Good. Okay. It works. So the low bound, uh, this is for the class of uh, smooth and convex function? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, the, uh, how about for the case of strongly convex function? Yeah, we have a similar lower bound for strongly convex functions. Um, and it, it shows kind of the same situation. Um, I didn't include it here sort of for simplicity, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We, we also have a lower bound for strongly convex functions, and it also shows that uh, when k is small, uh, local SGD can be worse than mini batch. I see. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, right. So, so our experiments are for logistic regression for the the local SGD, thumb twiddling, and and mini batch SGD, um, and we did this for for optimally tuned step sizes for each individual algorithm. Um, and we see in the top left panel, when k is small and m is large, um, indeed, local SGD actually does perform worse in practice than both thumb twiddling and mini batch SGD, um, even for this simple logistic regression experiment. Um, we see sort of outside of this case more generally, when k is small, uh, k equals 5 here in this case, um, local SGD does uh, worse than mini batch SGD. When K is somewhat larger, uh, local SGD does about as well as mini batch SGD. And when K is very large, uh, local SGD does much better than mini batch SGD. And I want to emphasize that these plots are fully consistent with both the theory I just showed you and also with prior empirical observations. So they suggest that this, the, the comparison between local SGD and mini batch SGD does depend quite significantly on the parameters of the problem. Um, and it also suggests that the lower bound I just showed you is pretty representative of local SGD's true behavior on, at least on sufficiently non-quadratic objectives. So recall that we showed that there's sort of no difference, or, or sorry, we, we showed that local SGD is always better than mini batch SGD for quadratic objectives. So this sort of lower bound behavior is only going to appear when the, uh, when the objective is non-quadratic in some way. Um, so in practice, this also appears to be sort of a warning that you should only use local SGD when k is relatively large, and you should be wary of using it for smaller k, uh, because in that case, it is generally a better idea to use mini batch SGD. Right, so to conclude our comparison of local SGD with mini batch SGD, we showed that for quadratic objectives, local SGD is strictly better than mini batch SGD in every regime. And it's, in fact, sort of optimal up to acceleration. Uh, furthermore, local SGD and a related family of algorithms, they all enjoy convergence that is independent of k. It only depends on k times r. And therefore, they can be sort of perfectly parallelized. You can run uh, 
you can run these algorithms on, on each of the M machines individually and then average once at the end, and it's just as good as if you'd been averaging at every step. And we also show that accelerating local SGD is quite straightforward in this setting using the, the method of Kadimian Lan. So uh, moving on to general convex objectives, we've shown that local SGD is neither strictly worse nor strictly better than mini batch SGD. So on the one hand, we give the first analysis of local SGD that improves over mini batch SGD in any non trivial regime. And this specifically happens when K is relatively large, uh, roughly K bigger than R. Uh, and I want to mention that, that Kuliskov et al. Uh, concurrently proved a similar bound with a slightly better guarantee that, that removes the log factor. Um, on the other hand, so, so on the one hand, local SGD can be better than mini batch SGD. But on the other hand, our lower, bat, our lower bound also shows that when k is relatively small, roughly uh, k less than square root of r, uh, local SGD is genuinely worse than mini batch SGD in the worst case. Um, and it can even be worse than this thumb twiddling SGD that I recently mentioned. Um, and this sort of explains uh, a lot of the difficulty that we've had in trying to prove local SGD is better because it, it isn't necessarily better. Um, so are there any questions about the comparison between local SGD and mini batch SGD? So while, okay, there's a question by Praneet. I'm unmuting you, there you go. Hi, Blake. Uh Thanks for Hi. your talk. Uh, I have a, I have two questions. One is, uh, what was the data on which the logistic regression experiment was run? Uh, it was run on a synthetic data set, um, not a non-separable uh, uh, data set in like ten or hundred dimensions or something. Um, okay. So, the, the, as in, was it like a random data set or was it? A, sort of adversarially, I mean, was it like, uh, to, was it close to reflecting your lower bound construction? Oh, um, no, it wasn't particularly, basically, I, the, the data was like, it was, the data was Gaussian, or perhaps, some, okay. yeah, I believe the data was Gaussian, and then we drew a boundary that was nonlinear. Um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm fairly confident that a similar behavior would have held for like natural data too. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and and second, uh, yeah, I, I just want to qualify maybe your remark uh, that local SGD can be worse than the other things if I mean, uh, if we don't. So the, if we use this two step sizes, which is done in the scaffold paper then you can make sure that local SGD is always at least as good as mini batch SGD. And That's as right. you show, it can sometimes be better. Right, absolutely. Um, right. So I had a question about the construction of this lower, lower bound. So uh, you, you said that for quadratics, you have a pretty good behavior. So that would mean that the lower bound would not be constructed for quadratics. So can you comment right. on this? Um, yeah, so I actually have uh, some slides on this. So the lower bound construction is, is actually, it's almost quadratic. Um, and the, so the, the first two terms here are quadratic and the third term is, is something like this. And it's just, it's, it's piecewise quadratic. On the left, it's uh, quadratic with, uh, second derivative like h over four or something and on the right it's quadratic with uh, uh, second derivative twice as large and uh, to give you a brief intuition about uh, sort of what what goes wrong here um, when you do local SGD sort of each iterate on each machine is is, is working independently and sort of half of the time it's gonna go left. And when it goes left, the gradient is relatively small and will sort of only push it back towards the middle by a little bit. 
But on the other hand, when you go to the right, the gradient is pretty big and it's gonna kind of push you way back to the left. And so on average, you're gonna wind up drifting off to the left a little bit. And the, the lower bound works by sort of carefully bounding how far you're gonna drift off to the left and showing that uh, sort of local SGD is, is inevitably going to uh, introduce this sort of bias. Um, and this third term is kind of what gives you that uh, that bad behavior. Okay, thank you. So I, I noticed another question by Tim. Uh, yeah, so uh, all the results you present today is for the um, homogeneous uh, data, right? Right. So do you observe the same results uh, when you transfer to the heterogeneous data? So we've, we've not done experiments with heterogeneous data. So I, I can't tell you anything too definite. Although I will point out that our lower bound for homogeneous data does apply for heterogeneous data because, you know, homogeneous uh, data is a special case of <laughs> heterogeneous data. But I, I don't know. Um, yeah, exactly so, 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 uh, so I, by that I don't mean about the numerical experiment. Uh, for example, the case of quadratic uh, objective functions uh, when we have uh, heterogeneous uh, data, do you uh, have the same result to show that uh, local HGD always better than mini batch? Um, as yeah, so if as long as the as long as the overall function you're trying to optimize is quadratic. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, local SGD will, will have the same behavior, even if mm. the distributions are different. Mm. Um, but, uh, right. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. So I had also another question. So um, if I go back to your assumption, but you don't have to go back there because I can see the notation in the upper right corner on the sigma. So this is a uniform bound across all the axes and on the variance of the stochastic uh, gradient. Now this, this uh, type of bound holds uh, when you actually compute the full gradient and do a perturbation. But uh, when you, let's say, subsample, then this is uh, problematic. Right. Uh, and my question would be, uh, what do you think about possible extensions uh, beyond this model for the stochastic gradient? Yeah, so uh, I think that's that's an important thing to think about. I uh, I don't expect that it will significantly change the picture here of local SGD being sometimes better or sometimes worse uh, than than mini batch. Um, and I also uh, like intuitively, it seems like. Uh, mini batch SGD might actually have an additional advantage if the uh, if the variance in the gradients increases as you move away from the optimum, and the reason for this is that the mini batch SGD uh, stochastic gradients are m most likely going to be computed at points that are sort of closer to the objective because they're not uh, they're not all dispersing due to the the random local variations. Um, and so I expect that uh, that sort of this general picture will still hold even in that case, although I, I don't I don't have a proof of that. Of course, our, our lower bound also generally applies in, in that setting too. Um, but the upper bounds don't. Okay. Thank cool. You. So more questions. Okay. Um, right. So, so just sort of to wrap things up, we've pretty comprehensively compared how local and mini batch SGD compare with each other. Uh, but I want to back up for a moment and see where this leaves us for the intermittent communication setting more generally. 
So the, the current situation is that we have sort of a number of algorithms, including uh, mini batch SGD and local SGD, and also uh, Scaffold, which I mentioned earlier, and uh, something I haven't mentioned, which is SVRG. Um, and many of these algorithms are in some sense Pareto optimal, um, like they're sometimes the best we can do, but no one of the algorithms dominates all of the others. Um, that is, we don't have a single algorithm that attains the best known error in every regime. And so at least aesthetically, it would be kind of nice to have a single method to rule them all, meaning that it sort of does as well as all the other algorithms in every regime simultaneously. So one potential avenue for improvement over what we have would be to figure out a way of accelerating local SGD. Um, and we've shown that you can easily do this in the quadratic case. Um, however, in the non-quadratic case, it's not trivial to do this, and particularly it's not trivial to analyze it. So we, you know, we had enough trouble trying to analyze regular local SGD uh, and, and doing these sort of straightforward acceleration uh, methods would likely be even harder to analyze. Um, furthermore, it seems fairly clear from our analysis here that merely accelerating local SGD is probably not going to be enough for it to uh, dominate all the other algorithms. Uh, lo accelerated local SGD seems unlikely to uh, be always better than accelerated mini batch SGD, for instance. So besides this, what other methods could be better in the intermittent communication model? Like local SGD really seemed like a clear contender for this, but as we've shown, it's really not the, the master algorithm. Um, and furthermore, sort of beyond just improving over what we have, we would especially like to know what is the optimal method and what is the optimal rate. Um, we have a lower bound on the best attainable error. However, it seems fairly unlikely that this lower bound is tight because it only depends on the product of K and R and not on K or R individually. Um, and again, uh, uh, th this was possible in the quadratic case, but it seems like it, should be, uh, it, it shouldn't be possible to average once at the end and do just as well in the non-quadratic case. Um, right, so we have a lower bound and we also have analyzed uh, many algorithms, but there are pretty significant gaps between their guarantees and the lower bound. Uh, so there's a pretty big range of possibilities that will need to be explored moving forward. Um, and, and, and progress towards understanding these questions in, in this basic uh, distributed optimization setting, intermittent communication, homogeneous data and convex objectives. Um, it's useful in and of itself, and it's also uh, should be useful for understanding other settings that have additional complications, uh, such as uh, heterogeneous data or maybe uh, non-convexity. Um, right, so that's all I have. Are there any questions? So I would suggest that we unmute everyone at this point as a as a test how that's going to work. Samuel, could you do uh, this? Um, and right. then so everybody... anybody feel free to ask a question. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, Blake. Uh, so I think like I just wanted to know if there's any kind of work which analyzes multiple different Ks. Because let's say I have two machines, one running with a very large K and other with like K equal to, let's say, five. 
and then you are running a local SGD where you one machine has a very large batch size and the other has a small batch size and they are constantly averaging. Do you think? Um, a- so I, off the top of my head, I don't know of any uh, papers like this. There are um, sort of related to that, I suppose, there are a number of papers which look at uh, sort of changing K over the course of optimization. So at the beginning, maybe Mm. you use a smaller K and then towards the end, when you need more precision, you use a larger K. Mm. Um, I'm not sure if people have looked specifically at uh, different machines having different Ks uh, throughout. Um, I see. I try to understand what is the, the what what is the lower bound saying. So can you just repeat what are H, B, K, and R, please? Right. Uh, so H is the smoothness constant. Uh, B is the uh, norm of the optimum. And then K is the number of gradients per round of communication, and R is the number of rounds of communication. So. K times R is the total number of gradients per machine. Um, And so just to sort of parse the lower bound, this is sort of the, this is what you would get with gradient descent with no noise for K times R steps. And this term is sort of all, all of the, most of the bounds get this term. This is essentially the sample complexity term. This, this is what you would get with something like regularized DRM. So the, the lower bound is sort of very optimistic because it says you can sort of do exactly as well as full gradient descent up to uh, the sort of statistical error. Um, I'll note that accelerated mini batch SGD gets one of the terms and accelerated single machine SGD gets the other. So if you could sort of combine these somehow, then you would, you would match this. But again, it doesn't seem yeah. very likely because it, it doesn't distinguish between K and R. So can you repeat why accelerated mini batch SGD? Why why the first term of accelerated mini batch SGD is not the optimal one? Right. So accelerated mini batch SGD, it's it's only doing one update per round of communication. Ah yeah. So yeah. so it's only getting the R squared in the denominator. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Okay, thanks. Mm-hmm. And in your upper bounds, sigma is the variance over the whole space. Right. And what is sigma in the lower bound? Is it also uniform? It's the, the same thing in the lower bound, yeah. Uh, so the, so- the lower bound construction is actually, like the, the noise is very simple. It's the, so this is the function. The, the gradient is just the exact derivative plus uh, Gaussian noise. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Right, so, so the, the sort of the noise in the lower bound is very innocent, I would say, but it still can lead to troubles. And is that lower bound specifically for the updates of local SGD? So you... Yeah, this is very specifically for local SGD. Um, okay, yeah. thank you. Um, but but the, the output in this... Uh in this slide, the, the lower bound in this slide is not specific to local SVD, right? Yeah, this, this, this lower bound is not specific to local SVD. This applies to any intermittent communication algorithm. I'm not sure if somebody was trying to ask a question, but I only heard some beeps. <laughs> Maybe AI is asking questions, some code. I don't know the answer. Good. I do not see new questions flowing in. Nobody's asking. We had plenty of questions, I would say. Thank you very much. Blake for this uh, great talk. Thank you. Uh, Thanks everybody for uh, showing up, for coming, for asking questions and uh,
looking forward to seeing everyone next week.